Um, it's very interesting. The thing that really stood out about this Ray uh, psychosis match is that it felt, I, I can't recall ever watching a match where the wrestlers turned on the crowd. <laughs> like it's like they, they, they're, they're out there. All right. Ray and psychosis are, are doing, I guess they're doing their thing, but it's not quite what the fans were expecting. So the fans are getting a little, they're grumbling. Um, and so there's a point during the match where it appears that Sakosis and Ray just say to each other, you know what? Screw it. And they just start dropping bombs on each other. And like they start going nuts. And for the next like five minutes or so, they're yeah, it's just high spot, high spot, boom, boom. Psychosis comes off the top rope. Ray does this thing, and then it's over. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, it seemed quick. It and, definitely uh, seemed quick. It did seem quick, but that was kind of cool because that's what kind of the first few matches were all kind of like that, just kind of quick mm -hmm. um, exhibitions. Um, but yeah, that's what really stood out to me. Like the fans kind of were, were grumbling, and Ray and Psychosis were like, oh, you're going to, oh, you're going to grumble? Oh, you're going to, are, are you thinking about booing us? Okay, watch this. And they just flew through their stuff and like got out. I don't know if anyone else kind of got that same vibe, but oh well, they I even thought. mentioned it in commentary. Mm -hmm. Like Foley was talking about, it. he's like, there were there were a few crowds that if they like if the ECW crowd booed you, you got angry about it, and you, you know, like he he was he was basically telling us what they were going through during the match. Mm -hmm. Like he was saying like. If they boo you, you know you need to step it up, and and that was right before they did the dives to the outside and everything. But to be fair to the crowd, Ray and Psychosis did not set them up to succeed because there were two major problems at the beginning of the match. One, Psychosis came out with his mask on, which got a big pop and took it off. Mm -hmm. I understand why he did that because in WWE he was wrestling without his mask off. I think was he unmasked in WCW or was no, it AAA? I don't think he. I think it was AAA. But the thing is, because okay, I, I recall watching this and, and he took the mask off, and I remember being shocked because I had yeah. not seen that. Um, yeah. and and this was this is Psychosis's first look in WWE is before the Mexican mm -hmm. Cools and all that stuff. So yeah, it, so I think people, were, I think a lot of people were not following AAA in 2005 you know your general ecw audience in that crowd even um not as accessible as it is on twitch these days right so that was your first like oh he doesn't have a mask and then the chance of and i remember this distinctly uh before the rewatch the uh because uh, yeah, jacob actually last week just or last yeah last week when he assigned this said listen to the crowd it kind of throws things off a little bit um then there's a uh put your mask back on chant uh, mm -hmm. uh so so which was like Okay, you know, that's that's what they hung on to. And I think that that did throw kind of the vibe of everything. That is not the only again, watching more of this show and when Ron Smackdown uh uh sit in their seats halfway through the show, every match afterwards is the match is going on and the crowd is saying, you know, fuck you, Raw, fuck you, SmackDown, fuck you, Bischoff, mm -hmm. whoever is up there well, drawing attention. Well, well yeah. the other the other uh, I'm sorry, the other big thing that did not do the many favors. Ray came out to his WWE music. Mm -hmm. Everybody came out to the and, WWE and that, music. No, but on the live show, like when it aired live, Tommy Dreamer came out to his ECW music. Hmm. Sandman came out to enter Sandman. Right. Like, like they got those licenses for, for the one night. Yes. The only music they didn't change, they have Ray come out to his WWE music. And everyone booed the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. that, that that wasn't setting them up for for success. Like it really wasn't. But Jericho came out to his music, didn't he? Like his at the time music. But it's but it's no Jericho came out to Lion Tamer. Did he? Huh. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty. I don't back. think he. I don't think he can. Oh no! Wait, he might have. I don't remember the live feed, but I'm pretty sure he came. See, if if he did come out to his WWE music. He came out in his ECW gear. Yes, he did. Yes, Ray right. came. Ray came out fully formed, like 2002 SmackDown Rey Mysterio. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Farnsworth, do you have any recollections? I, I'm not sure if you, you rewatched the match recently, but you, you had to have seen it back in the day. I I rewatched it for homework. Excellent. Um, 
the things that stood out to me was a you could tell uh i like that was not that that was the wwe version of ray mm -hmm. trying to get back to the ecw and even wcw version of ray um it was a little safer than i think he normally would have been um the other thing that stood out to me is there are just certain guys that can work each other and even on an off night pull out magic like mm -hmm. A AJ and and Chris Daniels or Delirious and Matt Seidel and I think uh, and everyone thinks of Ray and Eddie and they should but uh, Ray and Psychosis I think had that same level of maybe not quite as good as, as Ray and Eddie but uh, they knew that they could work with each other and when they when the crowd got to them and they decided well let's just start laying stuff in it uh, you could tell that they knew that they could trust each other yeah. and do some of the things that that I don't know that the WWE Ray would have ever done. Uh, for instance, like I, I know at one point it was telling that they did a uh, uh, Ray was over the guardrail and uh, Psychosis did a, I believe it was a guillotine leg drop off of the top rope. Off the top. Yeah, yeah, the the, so, psych the psycho guillotine. Psycho guillotine. And yeah. I was looking it up. Uh, Psychosis did lose his mask. While he was with WCW, oh, right. oh uh, was he? He was. Were you part of Dirty well, Animals? he, he animals? lost it. He lost it officially in Mexico. Okay, uh, to Rey Mysterio Senior, mm -hmm. and then they had him lose it again on Nitro. Oh, on Nitro, fantastic! Yeah, so so Psychosis did wrestle maskless on American TV, which mm -hmm. that's why it didn't make any sense to me. Like if he just yeah. came out as Psychosis. Like with his without the mask, either yeah. either have the mask on for the whole thing for the retro feel of it, I, I, or I, don't have it on. I, I think the homage. I understand what they're getting at. They mentioned on commentary about it being an homage to that's what he wore back then, and and I think you know probably consider. Uh, I don't remember him, and at the time watching, I did not know about him in WCW losing the mask. But also, that was probably in the later days of WCW, where yeah. a lot of stuff got lost and in, in just got lost. Uh, so. Uh, so like, either way, uh, this was a good watch. If nothing else, it got us to revisit. It's still a good night. You know, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, 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 it I just, like good. Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I just thought in, I thought you wrapping up. Um, I overall, like for the whole show, like for me, like when the raw and the SmackDown crew shows up, like the vibe of the show, like takes a, bad turn for mm. me just watching it oh, yeah. like up until that point it's just like here's you know all the ecw fans you know 10 or 15 years older than they used to be just you know cheering on these quick matches and it's all fun and uh yeah but when the raw and the smackdown guys get there it just turns into it, it feels yeah it just it, it just doesn't feel right anymore and just as i noticed this uh there was this meme going around the internet where they were asking people to select you know, which of these promos is the all time greatest promo? Mm, and Heyman's promo from this show is one of the promos that's nominated in there. I think it's really overrated, <laughs> to be really? honest with you. RVD, I mean, I yeah, RVD has a better promo. Out. RVD has a better promo than Heyman. Yeah. Cosign on that one, absolutely. Yeah. And Heyman has about a dozen better promos in his life. Trust me, I've documented them. And <laughs> yes, yeah, I think that's on that on Mayhem show, right? Oh, yeah, somewhere. Um, yeah. But the point is, it, it it was very salacious and 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 inflammatory at the time. Mm -hmm. But watching it today, it just feels kind of like I'm like, this is well, this is not he, Pete he had he had one good line to JBL. The only reason he was champion for over a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I mean, still. <laughs> I mean, and the, the the promo is basically just like it's just. Heyman shooting three burns up into the balcony, and you know, you know, just does like he does Bischoff and he does Edge and he does JBL, and that's it. He walks away. So it's like, and they all know so too. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like the way they reacted to stuff too. But it does, it, yeah, everything involving the Raw SmackDown guys. Well, just JBL, kind of I think, was perfect. legit drinking too. Because wasn't that also the night where he um, busted open Meanie Hardway? Yep. Yep. Yeah. At the brawl at the end. Yeah. So. 
Oh man, but still some good memories. And and I know Rob brought it up in the chat room. I also have my my VHS copy. That's the only one I didn't give. That's well, one of the few I didn't give away because I knew that it was that original with the original music that even the DVD didn't have, like the Inner Sandman or anything like that. And and it's good to have those. <laughs> 